Hey guys, it's Silk here, and a comment I've been getting all the time lately is how do I spot so many people, and why do my enemies look like they do? People are always telling me that they can spot targets easier on my YouTube video than they can in-game. And guys, that is somewhat down to the settings I use in Battlefield 5. I've played with the settings a lot in this game, and I've figured out kind of what to run to get the best spotting experience in the game. And my last video on this was received really well, but some of the stuff is just out of date now. So I'm going to be bringing you guys the new config file, which everyone's kind of running. And I'll show you guys the settings to have the best experience in Battlefield 5. So in this video, I'm going to cover in-game settings, which will work for both PC and console. And then some more PC-specific stuff, like some tweaks outside of the game and a config file. The config file has been used by a lot of players pretty much since the launch of the game. And Enders recently tweeted out that the config file gave him about 42 extra FPS on average, which is absolutely insane, although that's about 10% of his FPS gain. I guess either way, 10% is absolutely nothing to be joking about, and if you guys can all get that, that'd be a really good result. Anyways, I'm not going to waste any more time, here is the stuff I like to do in-game. Okay, so we're here in the BF5 menu, and I'm going to show you guys all the settings that I use in-game, and I'll start with the more console type ones, then I'll move to graphic settings later. So, I'm going to start with controls. I'm not going to explain everything, just the important stuff. So, here's my sensitivity. I use 800 DPI. This should be at 100% always, pretty much. And then you should just use your uniform soldier aiming here. But, as we go down, these are what I run. It's almost all personal preference. And this is my vehicle sensitivity. And I max out my vehicle stick aim sensitivity because if you don't have it at 20% or higher, you will actually turn slower. So, I just max it out because I don't want to really risk it at all or anything. It doesn't affect me if I max it out, so I just do it. And um, this doesn't matter because I don't have a controller. But here is my uniform soldier aiming settings. So I have it on and then the coefficient is 0%. I made a video on this, but a lot of people actually found that it improved their aim. I found it improved my aim and I won't go into it too much. Uh, video on screen if you want to click on it. But this is basically focal length scaling at 0%. So vehicle aiming, I am actually messing around with uniform vehicle aiming on. And I don't think it works the same as Uniform Soldier Aiming. It doesn't feel the same to me when I use on 0%, so... I've been running on default settings at 133, and it feels pretty good. But honestly, Vehicle Aim doesn't matter too much. It's, it's pretty easy to do. So, Vehicle Control... This is all what I run. I'm pretty sure most of it is not actually default besides this, maybe. So, you know, they're all on. Decouple Pilot Free Look is the important one, though. And here are all my zoom sensitivities. It's important that you have all these all at 100%, unless you've done a lot of testing with something else and you actually like it. And then plane control sensitivity, 150%. That's really important as well. If you have anything lower than that, you will turn slower. No controller tuning because I don't actually have a controller. All right, so we're in gameplay now. I'm not going to spend too much time. I'll just explain the important stuff. So HUD motion off. Um, kill log, this is important as well. So I like the kill, the kill log on. It's really important that that's on. And then it should be all, and then name or name plus icon. Either of those are fine. Now as we go down, disable awards. You want to just be thinking like, what is positive feedback and what is negative feedback? For example, uh, hit markers are very positive feedback. You want to be able to see those. They're really important. But awards, basically it's like you're telling you like, oh, you're doing good suppression or something. You don't need to see that at all. It's not useful. So turn that off. Critical messages. I think that's like V1 rocket coming in and stuff. So I have that on. Share usage data. If it has any effect on my network, I don't really want to have it on, so I just turn that off. Loadout mirroring is a cool one as well. So that makes it so all your loadouts are the same between the factions. I have that on. Here are my crosshair settings. I'm not going to explain them too much because they're all personal preference. Besides this one, I like to have it a little bit less visible on my hit marker because I think it's more important to be looking at the target rather than the hit markers. But these all change all the time, so I mean, copy them down now, but they might change later. Now, minimap, um, I like to have it at 35%, so I can still see a little bit of the background behind it, but I don't really need to see it all, otherwise it's just a giant square, which you can't see through. So that's on 35%. Always should be rotate with view. And then these are all preference, really. I find that I can actually see quite well on the on the flight zoom radius at 300, like I can actually see where stuff is. But the minimap isn't that good in Battlefield 5. It's not as good as it used to be. So copy these down if you want. I think the main settings that you want to copy here though are 135% for size, 35% for opacity, that's what I like running, and then on foot about 75 meters is pretty good for me. Here are the icon opacities. I should really turn this one up, it's pretty important, so I'm going to turn that up. And these are all 
you know, pretty much default. And then when I ADS though, I want all of them gone because I want to be focusing on a target. So I turn the objective down to 30%, friendly soldier down to 60%, enemy soldier should always be at 100% because that's what you want to be shooting at. And then the gadgets down to 70 and the danger pings down to 80. That's pretty much it. Besides uh, advance, of course, there's a few things here. Turn this all the way down. A lot of people don't do this, but it comes at like 75% or something. And that just shakes your screen when you get explosions and stuff. So make that 50% as low as it goes. Auto leaning off. I find that kind of annoying. Auto peek over is actually not a bad setting. I'll probably turn that on. Uh, it actually kind of helps sometimes. And parachute auto deploy. I mean, that's just... I don't really parachute that much anyway, so it's on. And this is a really important one here. Plane chase camera roll. That is off. And a lot of people ask me why my plane looks like it does. Like why the camera doesn't roll with the plane. That is because of this setting right here. Very important. Character lighting is amazing. Turn that on. And then aim assist, of course. I don't really have a controller, so it doesn't matter. Copy these down if you want. It is what it is. So, have we done controls? We have done controls. So, we're going to go audio now. Uh, these are my audio settings. 3D headphones is probably the best, in my opinion. And audio and background, I have that off. And master volume is at 50%. That's just whatever you want. Whatever's too loud for you. I have VoIP on because I think it's funny sometimes and uh, it's a little bit quieter than normal. That's about it though. Now here's the PC specific stuff or at least a lot of it is. So you always want to be on full screen. Absolutely always, no excuse for that. And always run the res and refresh rate you can in this game unless you have a really bad graphics card and then I can understand going a bit lower. Brightness is whatever works for you. 85% works for me. This is my infantry FOV at 84. And my vehicle FOV is always maxed. I think it's a free advantage to have it maxed out. And then I use ADS FOV on. Really important as well. It makes you, it gives you less perceived recoil. You have the same amount of recoil as it off, but because it has less like visual recoil, I find it easier to focus on shooting rather than pulling down. And I hit more shots with it on. Motion blur at 1%. I'll explain this later. But basically, if you're going to use my config file, make it 1%. If you're not going to use my config file, make it 0%. And yeah, that's up to you. Depth of field effects, they're really, really bad. Turn them off. And then these are my custom color settings. They're pretty simple, like they're not that different to normal ones. But basically, don't worry about Firestorm because it's dead. Here's the ones you might want to copy if you, if you like how my game looks. If you don't like it, you can just run your own ones. This is important though. Turn these all off. All these uh, film effects. And then now in the actual video settings, there's some more important stuff, so... If you're going to use my config file, turn off DX12, and I generally would recommend DX12 off anyway because it doesn't work very well in this game. HDR should be off. Res uh, scale, 100% usually. If you want to, you can run you know, a, a, a 1080p and then scale it down with this, but I don't see the point in that. Frame rate limiter, uh, it doesn't really matter because we're going to override this in the config anyway, but if you're not overriding it, then I'll just set it to monitor refresh rate. Future frame rendering, always on. It is insane for FPS. You get so much more frames with it on. V-Sync off. UI upscaling is just default. And then GPU memory restriction, very important to have it off. And as we go through here, these are all my settings, basically as low as it goes. And now for key bindings. A lot of people want to see this usually, and there's not too much that's changed. I'm just going to scroll through it and copy it down if you want to. So my soldier ones, most of it's default. Again, you can just pause and copy if you want to use it. My vehicle ones, I'm pretty sure these are actually all default, so. Transport would all be default. I'm not gonna really bother showing it too much. That's all default for sure. And here's my plane ones. I'll explain it real quick. So pitch up to space. That makes it so I can just hold down space and my plane loops around pitch down to left control because I felt like I had to use left control for something and sometimes you do want to pitch down roll right um I mean that's just arrow keys it's, it's not something I actually use it's on my mouse and then look up on left shift so basically when I'm in a dogfight I can press left shift and it looks my character up and that helps me see where people are going that's for decouple pilot free look if you don't use decouple pilot free look you shouldn't really worry about these and then look right on E and look left on Q easy to use really and then free look and rear view i double bound them to the right mouse button 
and danger ping obviously on default at Q. Exit vehicle on P because I always used to press it when it was on E so I don't want to bail accidentally. And I don't really have switch seat bound I don't think. Oh I think I use V actually to switch between seats. I can't really remember how that works but I have, don't fly bombers at all. I think it's on F keys actually. Oh yeah here we go. So yeah switch seat is on F keys actually. My bad. And where were we? Here, full map. I like having full map on my side mouse button because I I used to check it all the time in BF4 and it's just a setting that I've carried over from that game. Um, and then chase camera on my other side mouse button because I like switching between first and third person a lot. And you unbind um, space from fire so you can use it on pitch up. And that's about it. I don't have heli binds because I don't play Firestorm. I don't have gunner binds because I never change them. And spectator is all default as well. And that's it, that's all my settings in game. So let's get to the other stuff. And I'm gonna be showing you guys all the settings I like to do outside of the game that will actually give you a bunch of FPS. So we're gonna get right into it with the video settings. If you have AMD, it's probably similar to this. So maybe follow it through and see if you can do the same. So in the video, you wanna to go to the control panel and we start in the manage 3D settings, go to program settings and locate BF5. For me, it's in the list. If it's not, you just go add. If it's not in this list, then you can go browse and you find where you installed the game, uh, it'll be here, and then click on bf5.exe, and then that would open it. But for me, it was already found there, so it's all good. So basically, you want to copy me down here, so copy it down, whatever. So image sharpening, off. Um, that's not supported, off, 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 off. None, that's off already. That's on all. Low latency mode is on, because it's actually a good setting. It makes the game feel a bit cleaner, I found, so I like having that on. Max frame rate off. G-Sync on. Whatever this, this is whatever you want, really. If you don't have G-Sync, just make a fixed refresh. MFAA is off, and then this is your main GPU here, so my 3080. Um, power management mode, max performance. Refresh rate, highest available. Shader cache on. Sample optimization on. Negative LOD bias, allow, uh, texture filtering, high performance, uh, trilinear optimization on, threaded optimization on, triple buffering off, vsync off. Hit apply when you're done. So next we're going to go to change res. Just make sure it's on the right refresh rate. A lot of people buy these expensive monitors and they never set it up properly. It feels much better when it's on the right one, so make sure that's done. And then color settings, I uh, don't really change much here. I just uh, set digital vibrance to 100% and none of this I really change aside from this here. I would go to no scaling and then set scaling on display if you can do it. If you don't have display scaling then you have to use GPU but this will actually give you less um, input lag apparently. I forget the free video on it but always use the space scaling that's basically what I learned. And if you have G-Sync enable it I'd say and I don't change this. Now in this setting here, a lot of people don't do this, but I just go to within the video settings and then go all the way to advance and set it to full. I do that for both my monitors, apparently not, but I'm going to. And then adjust video image settings, it's all default. And that's going to be it guys. So now after you do that, you want to go to where you install BF5. So for me it's on this hard drive here, Battlefield 5, find the folder. You can also do it like this, I think, so there's a way to do it. Properties, open file location, and it brings up the same spot. So once you find bf5.exe, you want to go right click, properties, compatibility, and then disable full screen optimizations. And you should do this for every single game you install. It's really important to do that. So that's what I do for that. And once you've done that, we're done there. Now you want to search mouse. Um, here. So now you're in the mouse settings. If you can get to this point here, you want to go to, I believe it's pointer options and then uncheck this box. That is mouse acceleration and it's really bad. So take that off and then hit apply. Also snap to and all that, get rid of that. So once you're done there, all good. Okay, so what we're going to do with the config file is basically you want to make a new text document. Doesn't matter what you call it. And all these commands from my config file, all of these will be in the description. So 
It's not many commands. I've been through really, really long config files, like PhD thesis fucking config files. And this one right here gives more FPS gains than the other ones do. And the game just feels really good on this. So this is what I like to run now. And it basically will disable uh, anti-aliasing. It will uncap the FPS. It will show your FPS. It will make the FPS counter a bit bigger. And then this is what I use to actually fix shadow play. It used to record at 720p sometimes in other reses that weren't my native res. So I just forced the game into my native res. If you guys don't want to do this, you can just delete these two lines. But I'd recommend doing this if you record gameplay. It will fix some issues sometimes. So basically once you get all these copied from the description, or in my case, my config file, you want to put them into this empty document. And you want to change this to your resolution. So a lot of people will be at uh, 1080 and then 1920. But I play at 2560 by 1440, so I'm going to dial that in. And 1440, sorry, I can't type. And once you're done with that, and this is all ready to go, go File, Save As, All Files, and then type user.cfg. And then it will save. For me, I already have one, but I'll replace it anyway. And then there you go. Once you're done with that, you can delete this file here, no longer needed. And you'll have a new little file here, which is your config file. And you can open it up with WordPad, or Notepad, sorry. And you can see it's ready. And that's all you need to do. So that's the config file right there. And yeah, that's all for the desktop. All right, so that brings us to the end of my content here. I've pretty much showed you exactly what I do to my game to get the most FPS out of it. And if you want even more FPS, I can recommend Freethi's channel. This isn't endorsed or anything. He doesn't know I'm shouting him out here, but I mean, huge shout out to Freethi. The guy gives away so much content, which he could charge up like full on money for. He does have a service where he does all the stuff for you. You have to pay like a hundred bucks for it. But it's honestly well worth it if you don't know what you're doing because there is a lot of stuff that he does to your PC to get more performance out of it. But namely, if you're playing Battlefield 5 and you want more frames, I'd recommend uh, memory overclocking. Obviously at your own risk, but I did this. So I overclocked my memory, then I overclocked my CPU, then I overclocked my GPU. And all these gave me probably 40, 50 extra frames in the test range. And the other thing you can do is like, if you're playing any new game, he always has a video out on it. For example, Cold War came out search up Cold War on his channel and bing there's a there's a video ready to go and it shows you how to get more frames on it anyways that's it for the video shout out to Freethi guys he's he's an amazing youtuber gives away so much content which he could just charge insane money for but he doesn't and yeah that's about it so i'll see you guys on the next one hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully you guys get more frames let me know how it goes peace